compilation that you pick from? Um, right now there's just a pop sound, but oh. that's why we're going to upload one. Okay. See if you can scratch the swap You may need to reload the page. Unfortunately, it's beholden to uh, Flash's <laughs> stability. <Yeah. laughs> you know, flash is only marginal. I like that. So many cycles after so many times the fish moved. So once yeah. it bounces off the wall, oh, it bounces off, off the wall. wall. Yeah. 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 If if on edge bounce. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, now everybody go home and start writing code or uh, dragging code. All right, we'll see what, what this turns into by tomorrow. So now, G, you can go home and you I'm going. I'm going home. I'm, I'm writing more code. Feature project. <laughs> nice. What I've been doing, the projects that I've shared, favorite um, pictures, favorite projects, and as well as name and some of the other games that I've done. And you can also, and you also, I know you have, I know you like the scratch map that's right here. You like hmm. What's your uh, main scheme? So the main is. So you're this alien, and you're running around, aka little computer. And you're running around a maze trying to get to the yellow square. And then every time you touch a wall, it increases your score by one. So, apparently, I get after the game I create. <laughs> and so this time, you can go up and around, and it's touching yellow. And you can see if you want to get the alien to the to the stage. And now it goes, far as a bust. And then goes around the face. Wow. <laughs> All right. Pretty good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 That's like pretty, pretty Tronish, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, and actually something that I want to show you guys, I made my dad a birthday card. Yeah. <laughs> scratch. So. And this is the Yeah, I haven't shared it, but so I actually I can just do it right in the thing, and you see here I play it, and then happy birthday, and then. So if I click on the balloons, it's interactive, so they pop and then they come back up. I click on the cake, you blow out the candles, and I can cut off these cake. And so this is cat. <laughs> this was my dad's birthday card. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Costume 1, costume 2, which is the candle out, and costume 3, which is slightly 
shorter because it's just how you say that. As you can see here, it waits, it, when the flag flick, it hides, it switches to the first costume, it waits two seconds, and then it shows. And then when it's clicked, it's going to broadcast wind, and over here, which is the wind sprite, when it receives wind, it's going to glide across the top of the cake so it looks like someone's blowing up the camp. And then, so back at the right one, when, when Stacy he is pressed, it's going to cut off his cake. And for the balloons, it just goes to wherever it shows, and then when it when it's clicked, it pops and it goes down, and then it Maybe party that is high for two seconds to go. The balloons are again the same. So the flick, the fall, where it covers the wind, and for the knife, it goes through wherever. When space key is pressed, it flies down. <laughs> and then here, it goes to the costume two. When space key is pressed, it waits a second and then it shows. So that's the code for my birthday card. <laughs> the wild, the wind statements basically are just whatever you click on it, the device, yeah, and then it activates that block. Yeah, the majority of it is it, it just when it's clicked. Like they were doing in the video, they had when the sprite was clicked, it was, it was like moving and changing color. <laughs> There is a there is a backdrop that's the okay. stage, um, but the stage cannot directly control any of the sprites. Yeah, it can't control any of the sprites. Like looks and looks of the just can't actually do all that much. <laughs> if you wanted to, you, you could use that message passing thing, which is such a broadcast. Yeah. Uh, so like, if you broadcast, go to Antarctica. And then you put the patent so to hide all the party stuff and change the background to Antarctica, it would do something like that. Mm -hmm. But most of the time it just switches to the background. If that. If, um, if you're sharing something, can you, for example, just go on your painting trace right and share that, or does it have to be a bold code? Yeah, you can just share a sprite. That someone else could like put into their code and use. Yeah, and just put like, hey, feel free to use this part in any of your, um, in any of your projects. And also with Scratch, so if I shared something accidentally and it wasn't done yet, I could just uncheck it. Okay. And then that would take it off. Oh, I'll take it. I'll take it. So I'm gonna show you guys the project page because usually what people do is when they make something you can just notice in credits you can just be like I got the background from blah 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 here's the link to their project then you put in the link. No. You just and the community usually places itself if someone's using your work even though you don't know it, they'll be like Yeah, people will watch for that and they'll just be like, hey do you pop I saw this spray and blah 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 is it yours question mark and and then people know, oh if it's not theirs then they just put a link to their project and it say, Okay, that looks like so I believe also if you click the remix button and that's where your starting point is, it automatically includes that attribute. Yeah. <coughs> so it includes the previous owner's uh, information. That's good. So it's kind of a trace as to where it came from. You can uh is it consider is that also uh, like multiple levels deep? I don't know. <clears throat> okay, I said McCurry from the original yeah. source, you know, if multiple people keep reusing that code that would carry on. Something to look at. But, have you, yeah, well if you if somebody else has already used that and then you use it and modify it and somebody else uses it and modify it, does the original author of the sprite or whatever 
uh, is that information carried forward? I think so. I've seen it like I've seen it like based off of so and so's project. Oh, okay. And remixed by so and so. Okay. So you can have multiple remixes. Yeah, you can have you can remix the remix. Right. Mm -hmm. So it carries the original <laughs> author's signature. Yeah. Actually, yeah. if I go into the scratch now. And you can see it has a lot of oh. remixes, and you can look at. So you can look at the remix tree. Oh. So there's 233 remixes. And you can see it's oh, yeah. it started here, huh. it's gone over here, and here, and everywhere else. That's what's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Just look like cool. GitHub does yeah. it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Although GitHub doesn't have clouds. Yeah. <laughs> it's like GitHub for kids. Got cats. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. So that way, it's a neat way to keep track of software. It's almost like a repository. Yeah. yeah. And you can go back to the original author and get the original code if you don't want to yeah. use somebody else's yeah. remix. So, like, if I don't want to. Their code is like funky, but I can just go back to the original one and be like, oh, I'm going to use this. Yeah. That's neat. <laughs> and that way, and you can't modify the original one, so that stays under the author's control. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's pretty slick. It's a great educational tool for the kids, especially, you know, to actually learn software development, you know, tree and, and uh, checking out things and putting them in. As, and that's something, unfortunately, they don't teach real well in college either. So. Yeah, but well, I think this this is going to help with it teaching does. people open source principles. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's why I think it's been kind of lacking in the past is people just get software, they modify it, they throw it back up there, change the name or the number, and they don't have a historical record base of where it came from or checking it back in or if you screwed it up and if you replaced the one that was the original, <laughs> then you have, you've lost your original content. You know, it's been botched up and, and you have no way of going back. But that's good. It's, it's is this bad. running on a Pi right now or is it running on a laptop? It's um, a website. My website is running off of the computer, but if we go back into the desktop, this is all running off the of pie. Okay. Um, does Scratch work better with pie or is this the same as mm. It's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> you do not get all of these nice website features. Scratch 2.0 is, to my knowledge, not yet working on a pie. Right. Yeah, it's not yet working on the pie because Flash doesn't work on the pie. And oh, no. 2.0 is written in Scratch. Flash. Flash. No. So, so Scratch on the Pi is the old is version one. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a bit version more one point four. Okay. It's still it's still very you can do a lot of things with it. I mean, can you get one point four on the on uh, you can yeah you can download that. It's a Java outlet. Oh. Um, on the desktop. But you can also anything you make on the Pi you can easily bring into. <laughs> 2.0 by, yeah. by importing it can, the file. It will convert it. Like, I've uploaded stuff from 1.4 to 2.0, and it will just put it right back into the, it will convert it into 2.0. But can you take it from 2.0? Once you've converted it, you probably can't bring it back. Yeah. It, it depends, I'm, I'm sure. sure. Yeah. You may lose features if right. you've added features that aren't available in 1.4. Yeah. yeah. So okay. what, what would you recommend, Lauren, as far as if somebody's getting started, is, is one better than the other, or you know, Raspberry Pi <laughs> Scratch, or mm -hmm. go straight to Scratch? Raspberry Pi is pretty cool if you just want to go all out and have your own computer with Scratch and Python mm -hmm. and to carry you forward, but 2.0 is also good if you don't want to deal with the hack with getting Raspberry Pi all set up. You can just have your Scratch up in your browser. Mm -hmm. And I also like 1.4 because I can code on the bus to and from school, so, and when with, <laughs> I've been known on Tuesdays and Thursdays when we have track meets, I've been known to be frantically coding in the bus before my battery, before my laptop battery loses all power. No pressure. 
So no pressure. So what else can I do through the Raspberry Pi? Well, with Raspberry Pi, you can go on Mindware, which is the web browser, and there's Pi Games and Python. Do they make things out of it? Out of what? Out of the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, like I mentioned, you can do the dog treat machine, and there's a lot of other stuff. Just Pi. Yeah. Raspberry Pi, you also it comes with, I think, a word processor, a spreadsheet, and um, is it, uh, it's not, it's, it's, there's not a lot of headroom to do, no. like, open office. No. I think, I, I think open office is on it, or I downloaded it on it. I don't know. It, you, it's, it's pretty limited. Yeah. Yeah, that's something a little lighter weight. Yeah. But, uh, Actually, it worked. I think I brought up an office or um, Abby Word comes on, on too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot lighter weight than yeah. Open Office. Mm -hmm. yeah. Open Office takes a lot more time to do All right. You get one more slide? Yeah, oh. this is the last slide. Yeah. We're just going to finish up with the call to action. I really think you guys should give it a Raspberry Pi. It's a great tool to have to teach your kids the fundamentals of programming. and. Once then after that, they can go on to Python, where with Scratch, they don't have to worry about things like index, but with Python, it can be really frustrating when you're trying to figure out why your code didn't work. You need to get a trace back. And you guys really try Scratch, especially in kids. It's a great way to just learn the basics without getting overwhelmed again with the technicalities of programming. It'd be cool if you guys called me on Scratch for your name is Lauren X. And when you're going with kids, you really need to use your kids' imagination. You need to follow them and do what they're interested in. Like, if they're interested in getting pigs, do a kid game. If they really like Mario Kart or Mario, then do a Mario game. And just be fearless. Don't be afraid to ask what if, but always have backup in case what if goes wrong. <laughs> 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 set up and I have a beagle bone if someone wants to fire that up and try it. Can you run Minecraft on the Raspberry Pi? No. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs>